Watching Gears, brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. <laughs> hey, welcome to Gears. If I was to ask you what is the most important part of building or restoring a vehicle, you would probably give me answers like the engine, or the interior, or the paint and body work, or the chassis. And those are all good answers, but they are not the answer. No, the most important part to building or restoring a vehicle is choosing the right vehicle to start with. Because all of those other things, suspension, chassis, paint and body work, motor, that all is dependent on what vehicle you start with. So the question is, how do you pick the right vehicle? That's what we're gonna show you. Now, one of the most common mistakes that people make when they're looking for a project vehicle is they take what we call the Forrest Gump approach. Jenny. That's where they listen to the seller, they buy the vehicle with the mindset of, well, you never really know what you're gonna get. Oh, that's crazy. That is just setting you up for all kinds of nasty surprises. Because a lot of times the seller doesn't know the whole history of the vehicle, and other times they're not completely honest about the history of the vehicle. Yeah, those guys are out there. So it is extremely important that you learn to think like a vehicle so you can listen to and understand what these things are really telling you in spite of what the seller says. Also, you need to decide up front what level of project you're looking to get into because that way you'll have some sort of reference point when you're looking at stuff. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the five project levels we came up with, here they are. Level one is the get it running and drive it level. Now this is the simplest and easiest level because it involves basic mechanical things like engine, steering and brakes, and it stays clear of things like bodywork, paint, or interior work. Classic level one projects are cars, motorcycles, go-karts, even chainsaws. Level two is the mechanical and cosmetic restoration. Now this involves not only mechanical work, but also adds paint, interior, suspension, everything. But the focus is on keeping the vehicle mostly original. Level three is the resto mod. Now this not only involves the mechanical and cosmetic restoration of a level two, but it also adds things like aftermarket or modern suspensions, drivetrains, air conditioning, that kind of thing. Most people are doing a level two or a level three project. Level four is the frame off build. Now this is where your restoration or resto mod project is going to the level where you need to pull the body off the frame. And you need to have the tools, the space, and the skills to do that. And level five is the custom build. This is where you're not only pulling the body off the frame, but you're also doing custom fabrication and design work to create something truly unique. more information about these levels, we did a whole restoration series on Amazon where we go much more in depth on all of them. Okay, armed with an idea of what kind of project you're looking for, you're ready to start looking at vehicles. And this old 53 Willys truck is a prime example of what you may find out there. Now, the story on this, it's all original, never been in a wreck, and 95% rust free. 
<laughs> At least that's what the owner said. Well, now let's see what the truck says. And the first thing I like to look at is the body. And what we're looking for here is any kind of damage, any kind of rust, any kind of old repairs, anything that might be a problem. So we're going to start with this front sheet metal. The grill, the grill bars, the lower valence panel, even the bumper are really straight, as is the driver's side fender. However, on the passenger side, we have some pretty clear evidence of prior damage and repair. Notice how this crown is really flat compared to the other side, and you got this weird weld and you got a dent there. Obviously, this took a pretty good shot right here, and instead of fixing it properly, somebody just welded the seam up and just left it flat. So all of this will have to be pulled out and all this redone. But the damage didn't just stop here. The damage continued down the side of the fender here where it buckled and split. And as you can see, somebody got happy with the welder. <laughs> and then look at this. See where the fender is buckled here? You got a split there. That will all need to be fixed, but it's not just in the fender. Look how tight the seam is here on the hood. If you look down the other side, you'll see how the hood gets tighter here on the passenger side. So the whole hood was pushed back. That'll have to be pulled forward. And then, of course, if you come down here, you'll see there was some damage and some buckling all the way back in here. So there's some metal work to do to this passenger side fender. Next, we're going to go inside the cab and check out the floors, the doors, and the rocker panels. Let's get this seat out of here. Oh, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, anytime you find a mouse's nest like this, you can pretty much figure that Wow, you can pretty much figure your interior seats are chewed up and your wiring has probably been dined on. So it should be replaced too. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we're showing you how to look over a potential project vehicle to not only figure out what happened to it in its past life, but also to make an accurate assessment of what it's going to take to put this together the way you want to. So yeah, you got to become kind of a car whisperer here, because these things will talk to you if you listen to them. For example, these floor pans, they are speaking loud and clear. So let's get back to it and see what they're telling us. As you can see, the passenger side floor is fairly solid with no rust holes anywhere, so that's good. However, you do have some pitting all around the perimeter and of course around the tow board here. Fortunately, this is not bad enough to have to replace because this floor is still very strong. The driver's side, on the other hand, <laughs> a little different story. As you can see, it has considerably more pitting and it's got some rust holes. Now, obviously, these could be patched if you're looking for a quick, easy fix here, but based on the amount of pitting and the pinholes and all the stuff that we're seeing here, this whole floor pan is weak and really needs to be replaced. The doors were a bit of a concern at first when I saw the homemade screen door style weather stripping and the plywood door panels because this kind of stuff is usually done by hackers to cover damage or rust so they can sell the vehicle. Fortunately, the door bottoms, the sides, the flanges all turned out to be completely rust free. So this is a major plus. Another surprise is that the rocker panels are rust free too and they show a minimal amount of damage. However, the cowl area in front of both doors has what I like to call the Willie's wrinkle. <laughs> now this happens when the limiting strap on the door gets broken and that allows the door to overextend and it comes in contact with the cowl, puts a big crease on it and it dents the front of the door. Now, if you look inside here, you can see that somebody has been in here doing some repair work, probably our mystery welder, but as you can see, there's still a lot of movement through this area, so that's going to need some attention, as well as the cowl and the front of the door to make all of this fit right. 
Up on top, the roof is going to need some hammer and dolly work as well to get rid of the dents <laughs> and the damage that just seems to happen to the top of an old truck. All right, now it's time to move to the back. And for a 70-year-old truck, this bed is in really good shape. First of all, it's all here. Second of all, there's no rust to speak of. So those two things alone already put you way ahead of the game. But it's not perfect. So let's take a look at some potential problem areas. Now, like I said, the bed floor is solid, but it has its share of dents and wrinkles, which are fine if you're doing a patina vehicle. But if you're gonna do a high-end smooth restoration, you're gonna have to replace that bed floor or work all those dents out. The same goes for the bed sides, the headboard, and the tailgate. All are solid and rust-free and look fine with a weathered patina paint job, but they're gonna require a lot of metal work to get them arrow straight if you're gonna do a top quality paint job. The backyard fixes and welding continue in the tailgate hinges, the tail lights, as well as the rear fenders. And all of these are gonna require metal work or new parts to return them to original status. Hey, we're back and showing you how to decode a potential project vehicle to see if it's something that you want to spend your time and money on. Now, we've already gone through the body and the interior of this old 53 Willys truck. Now we're going to go into the mechanicals. Now, obviously the truck runs and drives. <laughs> you saw us drive it in here, but you got to go deeper than that. The engine was supposedly rebuilt in 1970, so that's our starting point. And we can see by the oil residue on the engine that there's some gaskets leaking, which is typical. But the engine retains most of its original parts, like the oil filter, the exhaust system, and the six volt generator. However, there has been some jerry-rigging done under here with this hardware store heater valve this my pillow radiator foam and this erector set battery mount <laughs> one surprise is the pry marks and the mysterious split in the firewall this is why it's important to look things over well but there's been some good stuff done too you got a new voltage regulator and you've got a new wiring harness so all of the electrical and the gauges work Underneath, the leaks continue on the drivetrain from old gaskets and seals. But there's no evidence of damage or restoration work. This tells us that this transmission and transfer case have probably never been out of the truck. The frame and suspension and brakes all appear to be in original condition as well, with no damage from accidents or rust but they're all showing the wear and tear that happens with an old, poorly maintained vehicle. Okay, once you've been over the mechanicals, the last thing to consider is what's missing. Trim, emblems, body panels. Is there paperwork? Is there a title? Also, have parts been added? And if so, what are those off of? Then you take all of this information and add it to everything else you've learned about the vehicle. Huh. 
<laughs> all right, now we take all that knowledge and plug it into the five project levels we talked about earlier to see if this is a project that you want to take on. Now, obviously, the level one get it running and driving project is going to be the simplest and the least expensive. With the projected cost on something like this being somewhere in the $500 to $1,500 price range. Because even though the truck is currently running, there are leaks to fix and potential brake and steering issues to deal with to make it safe and reliable to run on the street. Now let's say you want to do more and jump to a level two on this truck, the mechanical and cosmetic restoration. Well, the cost is going to jump too. 5,000 on the low end, up to 15,000 on the high end. You're going to be on the cheaper end of this if you leave the patina paint job and then focus on things like fixing the doors and the fenders and the tailgate and redoing the interior and that kind of thing. You're going to be on the more expensive side if you decide to go with a nice paint job and interior and maybe upgrade the brakes and the six volt electrical system or rebuild the engine. If you want to do a level three resto mod on this truck, well, you're looking at dumping anywhere from 10 grand to 30 grand into something like this. Because you're going to be swapping out the engine and the drivetrain and the axles and upgrading a lot of other things as well. Level four is the frame off build, and it's going to up the ante even more whether you're doing a resto mod or an original restoration. Now, you might be able to get in for under $15,000 on the low end, but it could run you as much as $50,000 on the top end, maybe more, depending on what parts you use and how nice you want the fit and finish to be. Finally, there's level five, the custom build. And this has probably the widest gap of all of them, because it can run anywhere from $20,000 all the way up to $70,000, and it can go beyond that, too. Once again, depending on what components you use, and how crazy you want to get with it. Now, keep in mind the numbers I just gave you are ballpark numbers. They can change considerably depending on what components you use and how much of the work you do yourself. I mean, there's a lot of factors. But it's hard to believe that this could be a $500 project or a $70,000 project, but it can. That means there's a lot of room right there in the middle for you to get lost. So that's why it's important for you to choose the level of project that you want to do, lay it out in your project planning book, and then you'll be ready to go. That will give you that sweet spot right in the middle that will allow you to build the vehicle that you want with the tools and the skills that you have on the budget that you can afford. And now, what are you working on? Today's What Are You Working On comes from Jonathan Garn, and he is from Ohio, and he has got a very interesting story to tell us. So sit back, we're gonna tell you a story. This is a love story, but not a love story of Boy Meets Girl. This is Boy Meets Truck, so here we go. It starts when Jonathan was around 12 and he was out riding with his dad and he saw this truck for the first time sitting in a driveway and he said it was love at first sight. Now fast forward five years and Jonathan's driving past the house and the truck is at the end of the driveway with a for sale sign in it, which turned out to be a lot more than a 17 year old could handle. Fortunately, his family was willing to help him out and Jonathan became the proud owner of a 1991 Chevy Silverado. And for a while, they were inseparable. He drove it to high school, he drove it to college, and he even drove it on his wedding day. But as everybody knows, life happens, and driving needs change. And after a while, the old truck became a catch-all for lumber and other junk as it sat in a lean-to beside the house. And every year, it became more like a piece of junk and less like a truck. Finally, Jonathan said, stop, the story can't end like that. And he dragged it out and started working on it. He tore it down to the frame, started building it back up. He replaced the bedsides, the doors, and the fenders, doing all the bodywork himself. 
Then he went through the whole drivetrain in the interior and logged two years bringing this thing back to life. Man, what an incredible story. What a great journey. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, oh, wait a minute, I don't get it. That, the, the truck's not rare, it's not that old, it's not that desirable. I mean, it's a 91 Chevy. Well, it is to you, but to Jonathan, he says it's like a Rolodex back to those days, back to those memories that he can access at any time. And that is the magic of working on an old car or truck. We all like different things. Some people like this, some people like that. So to recognize such a cool project, we're gonna give you one of our deluxe planning books so you can keep track of everything that you've done to that project. We're gonna give you one of our Gears t-shirts because you're obviously a real gearhead. And then we're gonna give you a gift card from Holly because there's a ton of things in their catalogs that you could utilize on that truck. And then finally, we're gonna give you a Sergeant Rock die cast because the story on that truck and me is very similar to you and your Silverado. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you wanna get in on this, get your project featured on the show, man, you gotta send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into what are you working on. The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime where you can watch past and current seasons of Gears and check out our new show, Stacy David's Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully what we've shown you on the old willies gives you more confidence to get out there, find yourself a cool project and start working on it. We'll see you next time.